Okay, so hello everybody Hi. and welcome, <laughs> welcome to my guest interview. I'm always like a fangirl because I love your work. Thank um, you. so like all of my friends are like, oh my god, he's coming on live with me, so you've got to be there. Um, we've had an interview before, you know, I'm a little bit laid back. I could go into all of the accolades and all of your credentials and your expertise, but we would spend the whole entire time talking about that. So I would love to just say, read the caption because all <laughs> the links are there, all okay. of the things are there, but there's some things I want to highlight that you don't miss. First of all, your work is incredible. Second of all, go to his website, michaellennox.com, find him on Instagram, watch his red robe astrology and get his books. The dream books are a powerful resource, I think. So, so thank you so, so much for coming on as a guest today. If you would like to introduce yourself, I would love to have you do that. Um, or we can just get right into the meat. So well, okay. Uh, hi, uh, Dr. Michael Lennox. Call me Michael. Um, I am a spiritual teacher. That's what I call myself, a spiritual teacher. And I always say it in this order, psychologist, astrologer, and expert in dreams, dream interpretation. And uh, there's some purpose to that. I want to have the, the cred of being a psychologist that I've educated and trained on how the human embodiment thing works. Um, astrology is the major contextual tool that I use to navigate my life and help others navigate. And then dreams and dream interpretation was like my first great love and gift that I discovered as a teenager. So, so one of the things that I've, I've got to say is, first of all, psychology is fascinating to me, but the thing that I love the most is you bring the spiritual and the embodiment piece to it. And I think that's one of the things that you and I kind of really bonded over was the embodiment yeah. piece because that's you know with embodied grace being the, my work right. I'm like you have to act like if we can learn all about this beautiful things the stars the spirituality and all this stuff but if we don't make it personal and embody it within our life and how we live eat breathe you know all of these things like how we actually make our life worth something that we're here to experience we've got to make that embodiment practice so that's one of the things that I admire about you is that it, it, you do make it all blended and it's such a beautiful thing. So thank you again for everything. You guys seriously like follow all of the pages. I will have all of the links so that you can, you can follow his stuff. Um, there's some things because I know that we have a limited amount of time on this interview, but there's some things that I wanted to ask you about. Um, because we're going through so many like major transits, right? I have studied with your course and I, it's, I still, it's like, like you would have to study this for a lifetime to understand astrology. There's so much going on that it is true. I'm grateful that I'm like a 30 year veteran, uh, uh, uh in terms of, you know, uh, uh, navigating so much complication, uh, um, uh, and astrology is endlessly dense. So once you like, I want you to come in kids, like check me out and learn from me. I've got a lot of teaching in astrology coming this summer, but it's like, be careful what you ask for because <laughs> you dive into that vat and it's endless, but such a valuable tool. It is true. We both operate from a place where embodiment becomes like our tagline, our watchword. And so like, what does that even mean? Well, it's like for my money, it's literally about the body. We embodiment is about the body leads the way and the body is the part of our consciousness that's in the present moment and cannot leave the present moment. Our mind can go into yesterday and tomorrow but the body is where the juice is happening. And so embodiment, conscious embodiment for my money is about being aware every day. What are my needs? What is the energy? What am I feeling? What can I do? What can I do? What is being drawn from me? What is being sort of confronted for me to face and do? And astrology describes all of that. Astrology transits are literally saying, Here's what your body is going to feel on a Tuesday. So pay attention and you will know how to get through this Tuesday better. And then you can extrapolate that for, you know, months and years by knowing what the cycles are telling, what story the cycles are telling. And uh, 
Yes. <laughs> yes to all of that. I mean, so many of the people that I work with are empathic, right? And so one of the things that I, I've really been working on is you. we have to look at the galaxy. We have to look at this from a galactic perspective now, because I think as we raise our consciousness, we're actually feeling frequencies and the, the, the planetary pull. Like I kind of redneck it down. I'm like, if the moon affects the tide and the water, it's going to affect our body. That's right. so then we think now the more in tune we get, the more higher we raise our consciousness, the more we actually feel the other planets. And I feel like we've, we've need to start having dialogue around this to where we, we understand that if you're empathic and if you feel these things, you're not crazy. Like this is That's literally right. yes. affecting our daily life. One of the things that happens in sessions all the time is, is that once I describe the energy cycles and the, you know, combination of cycles that a person is going through and basically say, well, you want to be feeling a little bit like this and this and this and this and this. Inevitably, one of the responses I get most is, oh, thank God. I thought I was failing or insane or losing my marbles. But it's like, no, nope, this is just the cycle you're in, the energy that you're dealing with. And I do think that there's something to be said in the woo-woo direction of accelerated energy, multidimensional awareness. There are things that are, we are opening up to a level of sensitivity to energy that's greater and greater and greater than it's ever been. You know, when the world is moving faster and social media is expanding and we see it out there, oh, wow, everything's moving quicker. Well, that's a frequency change. That's not separate from the woo-woo energy that guides this whole thing. Everything is moving faster and more intensely. And you can see that as accelerations in technology, movement on the planet, chaos and craziness as we try to figure this out as we go. And then that woo-woo language of, oh, the frequencies are getting higher is like, it's a little woo, but it's accurate. Totally. Okay. So literally what I was just saying, when you're talking about, I'm like, I just had a flashback to when I was a kid and we, again, read that kid, like I grew up three channels, right? We moved to the quote unquote big city, which wasn't, but we went from three channels to 13 and physically like our bodies are almost taking in that much of an, like we're so inundated with more energy, more frequency, more ideas, more all of it. Right. So it is a lot to process yes. and overload and faster than we have been able to evolutionarily catch up. Our psyches have not caught up with how fast energy is moving. And so we're, you know, we got a lot to learn on the fly. <laughs> right. There, well, and there's so much. So we could, we could talk about being empathic and feeling this all day, like for hours, probably. But there are a few things that I really want to ask you about today. So if it's, if it's okay, I'm just going to open up and like, let's dive into ahead, some of the major transits that I, I'm aware of and that I feel like are important. And especially for the next couple of weeks now, you guys I'm not kidding. Watch his, I watch his red robe astrology every morning. There's been a couple mornings. He's been like two minutes late. And I'm like, Oh no, what's going on? What's going on? How do I find his red robe astrology? Um, but, but on a serious note though, I know that, um, Jupiter is shifting into Taurus. Um, that's something that I was aware of. And then I also heard that this morning and on your podcast as well. Another thing that I use as a valuable resource, and I've, I've noticed some overlaps. So I want to ask you about this Jupiter and Taurus and what my guides had said recently that, that I told my um, membership about was making the magical manifest. And to me, just from what I've learned, Jupiter expands, Taurus yes. being tangible, like tangible, we will be seeing an expansion of tangible manifestation. And yes. is that right? In well, the way I'm yes, let me, let's... Um... Golly, yes, all, all of the, uh, uh, let's start with the idea that we are literally sitting inside of the Taurus ingress. We are meeting in the noon hour Pacific time. I'm in Los Angeles and Jupiter moved into Taurus at 1030 this morning, like 90 minutes ago, right? So mm -hmm. it's a perfect time to be having this conversation. So yes, 
Jupiter expands. There's no way to really understand Jupiter well without understanding Saturn. Saturn and Jupiter are the social planets, which means they govern stuff that's happening like outside your front door, but shy of, of like your divine consciousness. Like we're not talking about your outer higher consciousness. That's Neptune, Uranus, and uh, Pluto. So Jupiter and Saturn govern how we build a life together in, uh, on the planet in community. Saturn offers the structure and the boundaries and the responsibilities and the have-tos. And Jupiter is all about the get-tos, all of the expansion, the yummy. So it's about travel, education, learning, growing, and cash and prizes. So I want to be very clear that prosperity cash is one form of abundance that refers to all of life being abundant and jupiter gives us brings us and allows us to create more of that and taurus is the sign that invented money so you're going to see a lot of memes out there in astro land going money cash and prizes you're going to get all your you know financial dreams are going to come true and that is not untrue, but it is so the tiniest little most obvious sense of what Jupiter and Taurus can bring. Taurus is about the world of form itself and how lovely it is to be here. And I have to say when I say that is because it's fucking hard to be here. Bodies hurt. They get old and hurt more. They feel separate and that's awful, right? There's everything about being in a body is difficult. But Taurus is the one place in our, our consciousness, right? The 12 signs are just 12 different archetypes that make up the whole pie. And there's one pie slice that says it's lovely to be here. There's a void in Pisces. And the first energy that says, I'll go is Aries. He dives in and says, I am. So the very next evolutionary sign is, well, if I am, where am I? Taurus says, well, let's create the earth herself. Let's make it beautiful to be here. Let's have it be sensual and pleasurable. And let's have it be very rewarding to us. I want to value being here. This is important for Taurus. I want to value being here. So Taurus is about our values, what we find important, what we desire to do in this land of form that brings us delight and pleasure. So one of the simplest, obvious expressions of that is cash and prizes. And so if you had to assign money to a sign, it would be Taurus, right? So yes, your money experience and 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 your 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 ability to, to attract luxury and yummy is greater when the planet that brings more manifestation enters this sign but it would it would be a shame if all you were looking for was the cash and prizes and didn't go to what Taurus is really about which is i live in my heart venus ruled sign right Venus is the ruler of Taurus. I live in my heart. I move from my heart's desire and I can create all of the things that I value and bring me pleasure. And some of that will be money. Okay. And, and that's fair. Like, and honestly, so like when you're talking about that to me, I'm like, okay, this is a perfect time then to experience the earth. To feel yeah. the sun on your skin, to feel the breeze on your skin, to smell the smell. I mean, and we're coming into spring and in where you and I are in, in the U.S. So like it's springtime and there's going to be flowers and there's going right. to be sites exactly. and there's going to be if you want to make If you want to make more money this year with, with Jupiter and Taurus, go outside. Mm. Put your feet in the ground. Look Love up that. at the sky. Okay. And in that act, say, I am the vibration of pure pleasure, and I draw all delight and pleasure toward me, right? That's a beautiful prayer of honoring Jupiter and Taurus's capacity to bring us beautiful, yummy things, 
much richer than bring me all the cash and prizes, please. Right. Well, and the other thing too, is one thing that I, I know particularly, and again, training with you and some other astrology that I've learned how it falls in your own chart. It, like if you, right. if this falls in your fifth house versus your seventh house or your eighth house, you're going to be experiencing this whole transit right. differently. Very but different. The, but the theme is still going to be that feeling physical expansion. Reward in this land of, of being in the, right okay so whether that's career like <laughs> right or if it's in your family or if it depending that's on how why it i think people should be learning if nothing else the basic rudimentary sense of your chart so that if i say look to your taurus house you at least have the capacity to go to astro.com print out your house find the glyph for taurus right look house, see okay it's nine Google, what does ninth house mean? And the like, you can find all of this out on your own without studying. You could do that right now. And it is true and accurate that the house that is ruled by Taurus in your natal chart will be where you as an individual gonna, are most okay. likely to be experiencing an expansion of yummy but in that area of, of consciousness. Okay. I, I just like to always throw that out there because I know some people are like, well, I don't understand it. It never makes sense to me. And I'm like, but you have to know where it's affecting you. And what's, right. and so I always tell people, just look at the theme. Like what is the big theme that's happening in your life at the moment? Everybody's in different seasons of, of our life as well. So what is the theme that you're seeing? Are you seeing that you're talking to your family more? Are you seeing that you're going on, on trips more? Like, where is the theme? And then that usually seems to relate and translate into the astrology. To the house. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, to where they're experiencing it. So you did mention Saturn, which I love because the other thing I wanted to ask about was Saturn and Pisces, because again, Saturn to me is the, the really hard teacher that you want, you don't want because they're hard, but you want them because you know that if you take that class, you're going to know how to pass whatever That's comes, right. you know what I mean? And then with Pisces, and this made me wonder too, with, with the way my guides were saying, make the magical manifest Pisces is all the mystery and the magical, whatever. So we've got the structure of Saturn in this coupled with all of this other Jupiter. And then we don't, I mean, the Aquarius and all of the things. So there's so much going on. Um, I wanted to dial it in at least as much as we could to help people over the next few weeks to few months um, with like, how do we couple the idea of making the structure, knowing that Jupiter is going to expand the earthly experience? That's you know? Good. Okay. So part of why 2023 has some intensity and importance is, is planets changing signs. So Jupiter has changed signs as of this morning. Saturn changed signs as of a few months ago uh, um, and moved out of Aquarius for almost three years and into this new iteration of two and a half years in Pisces. Jupiter, uh, sorry, not Jupiter, Pluto just changed signs and moved into Aquarius um, um, and he'll be backtracking. So it's a big year astrologically just to have three major planets changing signs. And as I talked about in the beginning of our conversation that Saturn and Jupiter have a relationship because they are the social planets, they work in tandem. Mm -hmm. So one, one thing of value to recognize of both of these planets moving into new signs is the general relationship between Pisces and Taurus is a 60 degree relationship. They're two signs apart. Each sign is a 30 degree experience, if you will. And so signs that are two apart are relating to each other from 60 degree geometry. That's the geometry of effectiveness, productivity, and creativity. If you pick up tools while two planets are in a sextile, you will be able to take advantage of the opportunity. The, the sextile is like that, that train track uh, thing, the cart on a train track where two people push the thing up and down. That's mm -hmm. like 60 degrees in action. So, so if, working together. Working together, okay. if they do the do, they go. But if it's lunch break and they're sitting down having a sandwich, the cart's not moving, right? 
So, so with both of these planets in tandem moving into their new signs close to each other, they're actually operating in a sextile during this sort of first months of the ingress. So that means that in, in a general kind of way, at least certainly for the rest of this year, the needs we have to build the structures and be responsible and make sure that we're learning our lessons as we go is working in beautiful order with the planet that says, okay, if you have a solid foundation to stand on, I will bring you all the yummy you could desire. So in a, a top-down general way, we say, okay, they're working together. If you, if your, if your Jupiter sensibility is saying, I want more of that, please, Saturn is going to say to you, here's what you need to do or learn or work on to be able to have that thing. And so certainly for the first few months of Taurus in uh, Jupiter in Taurus, there's a an ease between our desires and the work needed to meet those desires by having the teacher and the expander working well together in these two signs that are 60 degrees apart. Love that. I, I love the way you explain it. So again, don't forget to go follow him. All of the links are going to be below. Um, we only have a limited time, so I want to honor that time. So I'm going to kind of switch gears okay. and, and go into the dreams a little bit, if that's okay. Sure. It, it, okay. So the other question that I've noticed with a lot of my clients, and, and this is actually just a question in my Embodied Grace community just like two or three days ago, was about dreams. And you and I have had this discussion before about dreams. So if you guys want to see, we did a whole topic on dreams last time that we had an interview together. So I can link that as well. If you guys want to see the interview specifically on dreams. Um, and again, his book, you guys get the book. Um, but the, the question I'm, that I'm having within my clients and with what the questions that are coming up is, are you seeing um, like an, an influx or an uptake of people understanding or seeing their dreams and how that relates yeah. to their, like there's some influx of dreams being relaying information or relating to our life yep. or what are you seeing with that? Okay, first of all, let's start with the idea that Pisces is the sign that is in charge of sleep and dreaming. Okay. In fact, you might even say that as the final sign of the Zodiac, Pisces would be when we go to sleep at night and dream, and then Aries consciousness would be we wake up again, right? That alpha, that alpha omega point in the in the natural wheel of the zodiac says that at Pisces we come to an end, and at Aries we begin. And so Aries fire ruled by Mars is all about action and starting up and awakening. And and if there's a mantra associated with Aries, it's I am. Now, in Pisces, it's the opposite energy. It's the collective. It's the unconscious. The ruler of Pisces is Neptune, the planet we call the Great Spirit. So in Pisces, we are not in the world of form at all. And so in the, in the experience of dreaming, the Pisces archetype brings us into a much deeper, richer, and loud experience of dreaming. In fact, I will tell you that in 2011, when Neptune, we probably talked about this in our last conversation, I don't know if we did or not, but Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, and in 2011, he entered Pisces, right? He's got like a 260-year orbit, so we've never lived through this before, and I noticed an expansion, like gangbusters of interest in dreams, interested in dream workshops. My got my first book published in 2011 when Neptune moved into Pisces. So the not only does Pisces rule dreaming, since 2011, there's a, a wild expansion on the planet of a desire to connect in dreams, to learn more about them and to get the wisdom and the guidance that that is available when our conscious mind is asleep and we can perceive, you know. 
So when Saturn moved into Pisces, one of the things that we got sort of alerted to about a month ago was, get ready, kids, your dream life is going to be a place where you're going to be working out your life lessons more directly because the planet of working out our life lessons has entered this territory where he's more effective in the dream world. Saturn in Aquarius for the last couple of years, Aquarius has got nothing to do with dreams. It's all about the community, the awake experience of people who gather and create a life you know, in community. So lessons were more likely to show up as how are you being of service? How are you helping the world? How are you, you know, joining in your community or not and, and have lessons to learn about that? So the minute Saturn moved into Pisces, dreaming, dream experiences, the desire to uh, learn more from dreams absolutely increased. You know, I teach these um, self-actualization classes using myths and fairy tales and shadow work to explore. And because I interpret dreams, my students will often share their dreams in the Facebook group on any class that I'm doing. And the minute Saturn moved into Pisces, the volume of that in classes got amplified. <laughs> okay. Right? So it's like, I love the idea, besides just dreaming, but if we keep with the like, loose theme of talking about Jupiter and Taurus and Saturn in Pisces, it's, it's a perfect sort of waking, sleeping mechanism. I wake up and I try to create the things I desire in my heart to land and form, Jupiter and Taurus. I go to sleep and I work out my karma, my problems, my fears, my lack, my limitation, the things that would inhibit me. Saturn in Pisces allows the dream state to take care of the, you know, work that we got to do so we can wake up again and go back into the Taurus, you know, Jupiter and Taurus energy. Um, so I'm not surprised to hear that you've noticed in your community and your circles an intensified uh, attention to dreaming uh, in the last like six weeks. So I, I love that. And I knew if I asked you, there would, I'm like, there's always confirmation. Like it never fails whenever I'm curious to see the information I'm getting, what my clients are experiencing, like there's always some astrological something behind it to where it could say, oh yeah, this totally makes sense of why we're experiencing this. So I love the way you blend everything together. Um, I love the work you do. Is um, is there anything, because I know we were kind of at that half hour mark and I yeah, try yeah, to keep I mean, these with half an hour and I get lost in time with you. I'm like, we can, I could just keep going forever. So I'm trying to be cognizant and pay attention to what time it is. Um, is there anything that is coming up that you would like to tell us about or? Well, I, 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 I'm not done. Like we got plenty. Okay, of cool. Like, okay, good. Okay, good. Away. Like, I, I mean, I, I have okay, a heart out, but we ain't quite there. Okay, good. I really want to talk about the nitpicky transits of what's happening immediately upon Jupiter entering Taurus, because we've just got done sort of talking about the the excitement and the possibility and the cash and prizes and all of the beautiful expansion that Jupiter in Taurus is promising over the next 11 months. He'll be there 11 months. But his entrance into this territory is not with a happy party. It's we're bumping into a brick wall. Mm. And I want to describe, <laughs> yeah. Fun times. Let's let's do this. <laughs> so there is a fixed grand cross that is being generated by both. Jupiter moving into Taurus today, Mars moving into Leo in a couple of days, and something that's building in the cosmos with Jupiter um, opposing, well, it's, okay, hold on, I'm losing my mind. Um, you've got Sun, Mercury, who's just come out of his retrograde, mm -hmm. 
North node of the moon. So that's our conscious awareness, our mind and our perception. North node is about our sense of where we're going. Um, and, uh, uh, um, but in, and now Jupiter joins that little stellium, um, but Taurus is a fixed sign, um, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. I'm just going to describe the square for a second. So, right. Jupiter's just moved in. North node is our future. Mercury's our perceptions. The sun's at the end of, of this mansion still. So we've got our sense of where we're going. Jupiter comes into that mix and suddenly that's today. Right now it's like, ooh, yay, cash and prizes. But tomorrow he's going to square Pluto at the zero degree of Aquarius. Squares are conflict and obstacle energy. Pluto is the, the Lord of the underworld and the shadow, the place where all our fear is kept, all of our hesitation. If we are a yes with our consciousness, but inside our hearts, we're a no. The no is in the basement with Pluto in mm. the shadow, right? So Jupiter and Pluto in a square says, I I'm, I'm bumping into the wall of like, I want what I want, but Pluto says, Smackdown, no, can't have that which you want. Um, so then you've got Mars, the planet of action. When he moves into Leo in three days, then he's going to be opposing Pluto and squaring Jupiter. Mars opposing uh, 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 Pluto is like our desire to act bumping straight into power and authority that shuts us down, whether that's internal, like, oh, I can't do that, or external, like, oh, no, you can't do that. That's a major transit of obstacle. Um, but you've also now got the south node in Scorpio. Remember, all that Taurus energy uh, is a fixed sense of where we're going. And it's opposition, the south node in Scorpio, that's about the past that we're trying to move away from. Mm -hmm. So like I just said, the north node is in Taurus. The north node is where we're going. Well, the south node is where we're coming away from. And that's always a tension to drop the past in order to move forward. So here's the square, past, power and authority, where we want to go and the ability to create that and action, Mars, but in the fixed signs. So let me give a quick little lesson. There's this thing called modality in astrology. There's three just energetic qualities, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Every one of the 12 signs is going to be cardinal sign, a fixed sign, or a mutable sign. Cardinal means starting up, initiatory, beginning things. And when any planet is in the cardinal sign, the consciousness of that planet has movement associated with it. This will make sense to all of you listeners out there. And if you don't know a lot of astrology, when the sun moves into a cardinal sign, we begin a season. So the seasons begin when the sun moves into Aries, Libra, uh, you know, uh, Cancer or Capricorn, right? The mutable signs are the signs you need when you want something to change and be fluid, right? So we got startup and then we got fluid changeable. When you want something solid below you, a foundation, you need a fixed sign. So fixed is not bad. You know, you hear fixed, it's like, oh, rigid. It's like, well, yeah, that's the shadow of it. We want to start with the aspiration of it. Foundational, solid, steady. But now you got four fixed placements in 90 degree angles, the angle of conflict and obstacle. And this doesn't play out in a single day. This plays out today and tomorrow and next Monday and next Friday. Right, so we've got Mars moving, triggering all sorts of squares. The, the overview would be the minute we experience the change that comes today of, oh, I can start moving tangibly to create form, Jupiter in Taurus, I'm going to bump into my no right away. Then Mars is going to change signs and the world is going to say to me, yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. 
wall, 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 wall. So there's going to be a lot of brick walls this and next week. And that's by design and on purpose. It's almost like this in a very, if I can give it a simplistic overview, Jupiter in Taurus says you can have anything you want. And all of the other setup is saying, except that you can't have anything that you don't have the talent to do. You can't keep anything that you attract unless you feel in your heart deserving of it. Like you just can't have anything you want, though the manifestation teachers will tell you you can. Oh it's God. not true. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear you say like I, I could give an obvious thing. Like I'm never going to be a basketball player. I'm five, five and I suck at sports. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. You could be like, but Michael, you never wanted to be a basketball player. Did you? It's like, no, I didn't. But do you know how many people are out there wanting things they don't have the ability to do? Right. Do you know how many people are out there wanting something that they do have the ability to do? but don't believe they deserve it, right? So you can't create anything if those things are present. And kids, if you're human, those things are present. Mm -hmm, they are. A lesser or a greater degree, depending on what, you come, what you've been through and where you're at in your healing journey. So I actually, I love this again. <laughs> Because my, so my guys, you know, that I just, I channel the information. That's what I bring right. this, this month. It was really interesting because I, because I always do a monthly overview, but this month I was like, I'm just going to let you know, this is what I'm feeling, but I feel like it's more for the 15th and, and beyond. And I couldn't really put words to why, but what you just oh. said, <laughs> yeah, what you just said actually is to me translates to what my guides has said was that after Mercury retrograde, like in the middle of May, and at that point, I didn't even realize it was Mercury retrograde. But what I was feeling was that the beginning of May, it was like, take your time, be paying attention. And they had said it was time to self nurture and heal the foundations. Ooh. And so that was what May was all about was healing the foundations within, but you do that by self nurturing. And I feel I'm literally getting chills right now because I feel like the conversation that we've just had is all about being in our body, being in our life experience, being in our daily life. How do we then honor what's going on here and what's going on with mom and dad and and sister and brother and husband and kids and you know how do we honor all of that the community that is close to us and then how do we then these crosses and these fixed points the foundations that are life yeah. right like you to know, me that feels like that's beautifully tying everything together on what we're experiencing right now it has an elegance for me one of the ways I can describe the elegance is, is that Jupiter is moving into territory today that we've been excavating for the last six weeks. Eclipses in the Taurus mansion mm -hmm. while the sun was moving through Taurus, a retrograde Mercury in Taurus, Uranus, the awakener in Taurus saying we can wait. Like there's so much juice in Taurus and there's been activity there of intense and deep proportions with an eclipse and a new moon coming, uh, um, 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 like right after all of this ingress and, and grand fixed cross it, it, it rises up today, tomorrow, the next day, then we move through a new moon in Taurus. So it's like we've we we hired the the backhoe to like dig into the field that we've laid fallow for a while. So we've been digging a trench in the Taurus mansion consciousness, and now we get to plant seeds into the trench we've just dug and set intentions in the Taurus sensibility with the Taurus new moon that's coming up uh, um, over the weekend. And the elegance of the deep work in this mansion followed by Taurus entering and creating a new moon with the sun and the moon is like, you just can't make that up. And so what I invite y'all to your 
your listeners to sort of take in is don't judge the walls you bump into if you bump into a wall or two between now and the end of the month or in the, you know, as we enter June. It's like, if you hit a wall, sit down and relax, put your back up against the wall and go, isn't this interesting? I wonder what comes next. Mm -hmm. If you bump into a wall and fight with the wall, you're just going to be bruised and battered. Got it. Got it. So I appreciate you so much. I feel so honored to even be able to have this conversation with you today. I am. I appreciate so much that you came on um, to talk with us today about all this stuff. Everything is like learning. I love just talking with you because it's it's like we just got a master class. Yeah, we just got a life master class. So, so here's your little life lesson for today. If you're looking on self growth and self nurturing, you're welcome. (laughs) Michael just gave you a full master class on what to look for. Um, Is there anything upcoming? I know you do um, your your monthly uh, meditation circles. I know you have like so. There's so many different things that you're offering. What would be something right now that you're excited about that you want to share with us? Um, I know you kind of mentioned that there's new astrology stuff coming up. Can yeah, let's talk later? about that because yeah, I, tell us how they can work with you. I have been so sort of um, well, not reticent. Uh, um, a bunch of years ago, I created a course, Astrology 101. It just teaches people how to read their natal chart, and that that's not a simple thing. Like it's a long and deep, uh, you know, course. But I decided to reinvent it um, for a number of reasons that have more to do with how my business is working now and the team that I'm with and the team that I was with in 2018, I'm no longer there. So I thought, what an exciting opportunity to create more of an astrology school. So how it's starting is, and I think we're going to be ready to launch this in July. I'm taking, I'm, I'm re- offering a seven module course on introduction to astrology. It's basically, if you take all seven modules, you will know how to read your chart as a master by the time you're done with these seven modules, right? So there's one about the planets, one about the houses, you know, about the signs, one about the angles, and then, you know, two about like, you know, uh, how the, you know, the chart is structured and actually works. Um, so for people who know a little bit, you don't have to take every class. You can cherry pick and take them one-on-one. If you know that you're a beginner and you want them all, there'll be like a discount if you sign up for all seven. And because that's the sort of foundation of me offering this teaching in a brand new way, that's a little bit more immediate and hands-on, I will also be then adding advanced astrology classes that I already have in the can to that site. And then we'll be teaching classes, both more advanced astrology and then little sort of freebie things over the next year. But my desire is by the time this year is over, there's an astrology school at michaelennox.com that can teach you anything you need to get you started in depth in learning how to read your chart and then learning how to work with transits. I love that. So be on your email list. Yeah, the, like, like, okay. the best thing to do for everything <laughs> that I'm offering in either astrology classes and teachings or uh, um, my self-investigation classes, which I'm just in the middle of my class right now using Sleeping Beauty and Selkie to help people do shadow work around romance and ideas about love and authenticity from the Selkie myth. Selkie's the the seal woman who gave up mm-hmm. her belt to have human love. And so many people give up all kinds of shit to attract and keep partners. <laughs> and so this myth helps us look at those kinds of patterns. So I teach lots of classes in that ilk, which you can find out more about at michaelennox.com. Uh, but the astrology is what I'm most excited about because it's brand new. Um, well, but and- michaelennox.com, find the, the the place to join my mailing list because if you're on my mailing list, you won't miss anything. Although, you know, between Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, I announce the shit out of everything as we all do. Well, I, because you have to, because otherwise you miss it. Like 
we think we're talking, we're talking about it way too much, but then everybody's like, I haven't even heard of it yet. So yeah, yeah. email list, I think is still by far if in order to make sure you don't miss this information, but again, yeah, I will get on have, my email list. Yeah. I will have all of the links. Um, yeah. Once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for doing the work that you do. Um, I appreciate you so much personally. And I know everybody in my, my little world in my community, just uh, they love following you as well. And we often will like chat back and forth. Did you see the red robe astrology today? Oh, I love that. Oh. So, so we're like, Oh, be ready, be ready. This is what's happening. So we appreciate you so, so much. I appreciate you for being on with me today. Bye everybody. Thank you for joining us. The replay will be available. Um, again, I'll make sure that all of the links for Dr. Michael Lennox are available to you and, and, seriously sign up for the email list make sure you're following the stuff that he offers is amazing i did take the astrology 101 it is profound and there's so much information like i could literally and i have literally rewatched the the videos i've already seen and every time i get a, a new nugget a new understanding and something else that comes in so i appreciate your work so so much thank Yay. you for being with us and um, we will see everybody soon. And now I got to figure out how to turn this off. <laughs> so bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.